Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about John Wick Chapter 4. I think, look, this is the fourth of these. Obviously, I did not see this opening night or early, because I'm not cool like that, but I'd heard all the things where it's like, oh, it really trails off at a certain point. Oh, you know, it's so ridiculous. Like, all these people are dancing while they're fighting. All these sort of things about it. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. I was a little confused by those comments. And then I saw the film, and I was like, yeah, but like, this movie's supposed to be ridiculous. Like, this is a McBain movie starring Keanu Reeves. Like, this is what this fucking is. Like, it's not real life. It is completely a stylized auteur vision dream of action and that's what it is i think there's more action than anything else in this movie's like three hours it's literally insane like there was i'm fairly certain they do a warriors reference in this like with the bopper you know the radio voice lady and all that um but they also in the beginning i'm pretty sure this might just be me being weird but Lawrence fishburne is trying to mimic or reference the osiris speech in the warriors and then gives john wick his suit and then blows out a match and that is 100 percent a lawrence of arabia reference any director who's like warriors then lawrence of arabia i'm gonna mimic the infamous cut that's insane and then it's like total tons of headshots and guns and fighting and donnie yen and like all this crazy stuff i can't sit there and tell you this isn't pretty much a superhero movie this is pretty much a fantasy world where people can have these fight gun battles anywhere and no one would do anything about it. I guess that isn't actually that fantastical, but it is a total fantasy and it's not meant to be realistic. And as I was watching it, I accepted that. And when I'm at the part with the dance club and I'm seeing these people not really react to this violent fight, I'm like, of course they wouldn't because this is John Wick and that's what this is. Like the, like you, you want to see this stylized over rational thought. And that's always what it's been. You know what I mean? It's, it's never been this, like, I, I hate when people go like in real life, this wouldn't have happened. They wouldn't do that. If this was real in real life, you would shut the fuck up. How about that? Because I don't fucking care. I have to be in real life. Like all the time. It's really boring. I don't care about it, but the, it's like, I'm watching a movie right now. And in John Wick, Yes, as sometimes we talk about those things and it's like, yeah, I get that there's sort of a point in like realism and stuff, but this is John Wick. It is a ridiculous action film. It is like one of those in a cartoon where they're like, nobody spoke, but they shot each other for almost three hours. And it's like, I mean, yeah, it's like, I don't want Keanu Reeves to have m many lines of dialogue. I want to watch him fight. And like, that's, I was totally happy with what I got. It's like, you know, stunt rock or something, but with fights. It's like, like, here's, here's what this is. Here you go. Instead, Chad Solinsky, like, it's his auteur vision to go as crazy as he wants. And it's like amazing to watch. It has a plot. Doesn't really matter if it does or not. But uh, John Wick is trying to get out of everything, trying to leave the guild or whatever. He has to basically set up to do like this duel and he has to fight his way to do it. And Bill Skarsgård, who was formerly Pennywise, is kind of the big bad in this. He has to try to find and kill. And that guy has brought Donnie Yen in, who used to be friends with John Wick before the puppy dog times. He goes against John Wick and John Wick fights in Japan, Berlin, and Paris. And makes them look more elegant than James Bond movies. Wow, I wonder why those aren't as relevant. Anyway, like all of the action sequences are absolutely amazing. There's a lot of huge stunners that we're going to be talking about for a little bit. I, I mean, to me, a lot of them blend together. This one sort of stood out of the sequels. I think the first one is the only one that really sunk in with me and I've watched more than once because they always have their standout sequence. Uh, the cinematographer, Dan Lassen, also shoots for Guillermo del Toro and uh, is a great cinematographer, does an amazing job in this. And uh, Chad Stolinski knows how to shoot an action sequence. In fact, so certain ones, I think the Berlin nightclub thing which i've talked about a few times that's amazing because you have this part before it really starts where it's all these people sitting at a table it's this one guy this black guy who i don't really know what he's from but he's there and then you have keanu reeves donnie Yen, and scott atkins and it's like this cool little like action heroes of different eras together i was like that that's cool 
Uh, Scott Atkins in the fat suit is great. I wish he had gotten to have a little more fun in the fat suit and do his fighting and really fought more. I never like how Hollywood, big Hollywood uses Scott Atkins, but this is a lot better than he's ever been. It looked like he was having fun, so I'm glad he got to do that. Donnie Yen was absolutely amazing um, doing the, he's like a blind fighter in this. He does a cool thing with doorbells. He does, he does a bunch of neat things in this. And I also like where he's like, John, John, are you there? John, I love, he, he it was such a authoritative, like, like, we're friends, but come on, John, what's going on? Um, you know, I guess he did a similar thing in Rogue One. He's a legend in his own right. I thought he did an amazing job in this. And Keanu is just being Keanu, but sells it so well. Yeah, the Berlin thing is great. The thing in, I think, Paris is the main thing people are talking about, where I think the last 45 minutes to an hour or something is just a straight action sequence. Definitely times where, like, I think John Wick gets thrown out of a building and hits a car and still, you know, it hurts on the way down, but gets up eventually. There's a staircase sequence, which um, I heard Chad Slinsky say, he was doing it, and I thought as, like, John Wick's fighting his way up and getting knocked down and fighting his way up, that this felt like a Looney Tuner, felt like a silent film, and then he was later said, like, I just thought, what would Buster Keaton do if he got to the top of these stairs? He would get to the top and notice his shoes are untied and fall back. And and I, I do find it interesting, and I was thinking about the with this and hearing what Chad Slinsky said, that between this, Jackie Chan has always said that, 100% always said Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Michelle Yeoh, I noticed that in Everything Everywhere, they're all exhibiting these physical qualities like silent film stars. And I think everyone's like, who would Keaton and Chaplin and Harold Lloyd and all those guys be today? I honestly think at this point, it's fairly clear they would be action stars. I think that is 100% the truth, you know? And looking at this, I think so, because much like John, John Wick 4 is more about having these action sequences in these various places almost to the point of like you know a later chaplain where he has you know these amazing sets and he can do whatever he wants and stuff like that and instead of that it's john wick 4 or the staircase sequence does play like that like they do play like you see them doing these pratfalls and these insane stunts and they get up again and you're still laughing and it's honestly the same theory i've often thought he shoots like a dance director uh, how Chad Solinsky does these uh, shots in this, but he 100% gets the action. You need everyone in the full frame. You need to see their whole bodies, and it means more, and he does that very well. I really like this one. I think it was a standout of the sequels. I like seeing Lawrence Fishburne again. The Lance Reddick thing, I, I'm sorry to see him go. Uh, how they handled his character was uh, a little weird. A little weird. I didn't expect that. Um, definitely strange to see him in this after he died uh with with certain things that happened but i think what works about this is understanding what the audience wants and understanding what as a genre this is supposed to give you and it's almost so pure it like will probably if you use it will give you a heart attack and you die it like most studio films will will cut it down and like get you down and get you to calm and like it doesn't want to give you something this pure action violence spectacle that this is and this is almost like too pure for this world like how did this how did we get to this point with this almost you know you look at like the death wish films they were never like this exuberantly alive of cinema and this is very much so um if you aren't into these movies you won't like this if you don't like violence on screen you're not gonna like this why are you seeing the fourth john wick movie what the fuck is wrong with you that's weird you're weird if you are into this genre and you're into these things and you loved watching john Woo movies back in the day and all that stuff you'll absolutely love this film i don't think this film says much of anything other than action stuff is cool but it wears its heart on its sleeve you know one thing i was thinking about i was watching this is how did this franchise increase in box office increase in popularity as it's gone on and i think because when it started you know it started you think of this kind of superhero element of it but much like how everyone's talking about how Top Gun and Avatar are these very like not cynical blockbusters. And the thing about John Wick movies is they're, they're not cynical. They're very much old Hollywood kind of stuff where it's like very much exactly telling you what it's doing and while it does it. And I think that is that kind of pure cinema sort of thing that we used to 
see in our blockbusters you know you see a director who's like i want to give you a cool action movie here's a cool action movie and that's all he's really trying to accomplish you know he's not even thinking about this leads to that or that you know we're selling this merch or something it's just more like here cool john wick movie here you go and it's like here's a simple hot dog or a cheap beer or something like that i know i compare genre films to like kind of simpler foods but there's an elegance in the direction that I think Chad Scalancy does better than I've seen any other director really do. I, I don't see directors really exhibit that as much as he does in this, which is, uh, it's amazing to watch. I, I'm really happy to be able to experience this over and over again, having seen them all. This is an amazing, cool franchise. Like every time there's like a sequence you're thinking about, whether it's that weird gallery in the second one, it's really, I think they have to themselves. Um, but it is just, you know, I get if people get bored and stuff, I didn't because I just thought it was so beautifully laid out and choreographed and stuff, but I understood what I was getting into. I think I've noticed that with a bunch of these sequels, I'm like, well, yeah, but what am I seeing here? And I think if you come to more of these sequels on the terms you really consider them, you'll be able to accept their sort of uh, corporate blockbustery nonsense on the face level they are. But I think Chad Slincy honestly is a guy who just loves stunts, loves action, and loves displaying them and shooting them in the best way humanly possible. And that is a real thrill to see as I watch, still watch action sequences that are cut up to shit and everything like that. These aren't, like, this is almost no plot really, and it almost doesn't matter where Keanu's going. You know, it's cool Bill Skarsgård really trying to give his best performance he can as the evil rich person with, like, a new suit every time and all that stuff. Just, I don't know, a very well-made, fun, awesome kind of action thing that I'm glad can exist in its pure, you know, shot to the head kind of form. Just, you know, it feels like a headshot of action every time I see a new one. And I'm kind of just happy that, you know, we keep going with this nonsense. Um, I don't know if we'll really see another one, but it's a fun franchise to say goodbye to. And I think it's a amazing that Keanu was able to deliver all these action sequences the way he did. And they're so elegantly and wonderfully directed as it was and I think you know if you look at an action thing almost all of these are more about running to the set piece and getting the plot so you can have the set piece and the reason for the set piece and I almost think all those films have to have a reason and John Wick is just John Wick and I think that is almost the success of itself is when you say John Wick you know what it is and you know what to expect almost like Pepsi Cola, almost like Blue Magic, and almost like the purest form of cinema. It's the equivalent of art and commerce in the most beautiful way as you watch Keanu Reeves shoot someone in the fucking head and the blood goes all over the wall. So if you have seen John Wick Chapter 4 and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.